Hey, what's cracking, YouTube? It's your angry biracial back with another video. Y'all know how I do. I gotta keep my foot on the necks of these Kangs 24-7. I am starting a new series, right? And this series is called Kangs Gone Wild. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive into this. Just let me tell you about that. Why are you touching him like that? <laughs> is grandma okay? Mom, why are you tripping? I'm not gonna have friends over. Friends? No. no! You act like I can have friends over or something. I mean, I was getting some sheets out for him. No! Sleeping no clothes on his suit. No! That shit. But I know what I fucking saw, Justin. She know what she saw, Justin. Talking about, mama, I can't have friends over, mama. He said he was getting the sheets ready for him. And I guarantee he really meant that. Is it just me or a lot of these rappers, these Kang rappers, are really on some DL stuff? I mean, they are so far in the closet with their hyper fake masculinity shit. I'm surprised they're not fucking in Narnia by now. Chilling with Aslan and the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and shit. Uh oh. So I'm about to go down. <laughs> wow. I bet when he got out, he's talking about he was just gay for the stay. <laughs> His next rap song is going to be What Goes On in Jail Stays in Jail. <laughs> That is crazy. And he has no shame with it either. Look at him. Mm. Okay. That's some wild ass Kang shit right there. This next video is of a really disgusting Kang who made a TikTok video that was taken down. TikTok finally did something right, apparently, where he talked about taking other people's kids from church. So the best possible scenario to be successful in this situation is to go to church. In every church, there's always a section for only toddlers. There will always be a designated time for the baby to sleep. And while the baby's asleep, Nine times out of ten, the people that's watching the babies are out socializing. This will be your best opportunity to strike. Now you're in the room. There will be plenty of babies for you to choose from. If I were you, I would choose the fattest one. And to be honest, you can walk in that room as loud as possible. And remember, you've never seen this video. The title of that video said something else. I purposely cut it out. Because it was just fucking disgusting. But I'm pretty sure y'all watching that video, you can put two and two together and figure out what that fucking disgusting cane really meant. I don't know if it's real. I don't know if she's doing her little prank, but... That's how I found you. Yeah, yeah that's how I found you. Uh, what? So what's going on? Oh what you doing over there? That fucking bum. <laughs> he was dependent on his girlfriend that he was living with. She bought him the phone. She was paying for his phone. And he was driving her car. Why that sister entertained that fucking bum in the first place, I have no fucking clue. I mean, the motherfucker couldn't even afford his own phone. Most actual homeless people nowadays have a fucking phone. And the fact he was driving your car because he didn't have his own should be a huge red flag. But I'm glad those two black women didn't fight over that fucking bum. 
He probably on Tinder talking about he a high value man. <laughs> Yet the motherfucker can't afford his own phone. <laughs> Just like his zesty godfather pretending to be something he is not. Man, old Ty Roach got caught. I mean, these Kangs really think they're fucking slick. They really think they are outsmarting black women. I've done videos before showing that most Kangs in America, I think 90% of black men in America can't read above an eighth grade level. Reading, writing, and comprehension are very, very important cognitive skills. They help with critical thinking, and being able to assess everyday problems. And the fact that you fucking Kings who can't read above an eighth grade level think that you can outsmart the most educated group of people in America is way beyond me. Now, this last video is truly disgusting and I saved it for last for a reason. This one is another DL Kang. He got caught hitting on and propositioning an openly gay older man. And when he got caught, his fragile ego couldn't take it. So like most Kangs, they switch on this fake hyper masculinity bullshit to try to make it seem they are not what they actually are. You know, when I was in prison, yes, your angry biracial did six years in the feds a long time ago. We called that bullshit the tough guy act. And any man worth his salt can see through that bullshit immediately. Puffing their chests out, acting all super tough, are the ones who are the biggest punks. That laugh at the end always fucking gets me. You see how quickly he turned on that fake ass tough guy act when he got exposed for exactly who and what he is. I did a little background on that whole scenario. That older man, I'm not gonna call that older black man a Kang because he's not. He's just an older black man who was living in his truth and minding his own business. Was being propositioned by that fucking Kang. And everyone in that complex knew that older man was an openly gay man. And that Kang's fragile ego couldn't take being exposed. And like the punk he fucking is, he attacked that older gentleman. And you can tell he was weak as fuck. Look at how he tried to grab that man. He just a weird, awkward moving motherfucker. But this is the type of behavior you can expect from fucking Kang's. Kangs are some of the most emotional, weak, and insecure men on the fucking planet. As always, sisters and the rest of my audience, I love y'all. Stay safe.